Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thanks for checking out the channel. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and today we're going to discuss the Elenco DJ VX50, but more specifically, how to program this thing via the front panel display for simplex use as well as for repeater use. This should be a very basic tutorial, meaning I'm not going to go into some obscure Menu 867 item. No, we're going to get this thing programmed. We're going to get it on the air, and you're going to be happy playing amateur radio. Let's get started. For the sake of this tutorial, this is the repeater that I'm going to be using to program into my radio today. Now, I do want to make a note that if you don't understand what any of this stuff means right here, you should probably go back and watch my video of five things every beginner needs to know about programming their first radio, and that should help you out. I'm not going to go into that detail because of that video, and we're just going to go ahead now and get this radio turned on and get this stuff programmed in there as well as a couple simplex frequencies. And after just taking a look at a couple things in the user manual, I am going to show you a little bit more than just how to program this thing, but some critical things I think you probably want to know about this radio. And it's really a simple radio. If you ask me, turn the radio on and depending on what mode you're in, you're either going to see the VFO where you could change the frequencies, or if you hit this VM button, you might even see some program memory channels in here if maybe somebody programmed this radio for you in the past. For the sake of this tutorial, we want to be in VFO mode where we see the frequency. Now this is the national simplex frequency, but we want to go ahead and start by typing in the repeater frequency, 145330. So far, so good. What I'm going to do next is we're going to see that the courtesy tone or the CTCSS tone is 107.2 for the receive and for the transmit. So I'm going to tap the function button and I'm going to hit eight. This brings me into a menu system. As you can see right now, I'm on menu item one to change the menu items. I'm going to go up or down. And there's only a total of 19 menu items on this radio, as opposed to some other radios that have a ton of different menu items. Since we want to change this to 107.2, the first thing that we need to do is we need to, if it says off right here, we need to hit the star button. This changes us to a ctcss tone and then for example there's another type of tone here so go ahead and get your tone for your repeater and then use the knob to go to 107.2 or whatever your ctcss tone is for your reverse perfect you have to hit this function button to save it and you'll see ct gets enabled if you don't hit the function button it'll turn back off or to the default of whatever it was before you made the changes next we're going to go to menu item two and this is the transmit ctcss tone and we're going to do the same thing. So for example, uh, I am going to hit the star button here it says 67. I'm going to use my knob up on top here to go to 107.2. And then I'm going to hit function and save it. In menu item three, we see step, and this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with programming this repeater, but I want to show you what this does. For example, and I'm going to go back out now. So if you want to go back out to the main screen, go ahead and hit the escape button. If I change by using this, I could change the frequency and I'm jumping up 10 at a time, 390, 400, and so forth. If I were to change that step to something like five, I would go up from 330 to 335 and then 340 and so forth. So I am increasing or decreasing the increments of which the frequency uh, changes, if you will. Let me give you an example. And then again, function to save it and then escape to get out. And now I'm going up three, five. And then if I go back here and I change the step to 10 and then I hit function to save it and I hit escape to go back to the menu, I go up by 10. I hope that makes a little sense to you, but I want to show you that because there are some frequencies that aren't on your typical uh, 330, 340 and so forth. With that though, uh, it's not necessary for programming this right up here for me. Uh, the next menu item, it's going to be wideband versus narrowband. Now, typically your amateur radio repeaters are wideband. If you needed to change that, it would be again, just as simple as using this knob up top to go wide, narrow, and then hitting function to save. This is probably one of the easiest radios I've had at program. Uh, you could turn the beep. You could hear my beep. You could turn that off if you wanted to, again, using the knob up top to turn it on or off and hitting function to save. The light, I leave mine continually on for the sake of this tutorial, but if you wanted to, you could have it turn off all the time, or you could have it automatically turn off after a certain time. Again, I'm going to leave it on and I'm going to hit function and I'm going to go to the next thing, color. Let's say I wanted the color of my backlight to be blue, which is a really cool color here. All I do is I go to the color blue and then I hit function. It saves it. 
I will tell you, if you stay on function or you stay in some place too long on the radio, it'll go back to the main VFO display. Next up, we're going to have the timeout timer or the TOT. Now, again, this is kind of necessary for a repeater, but kind of not. Certain repeaters are set up with what they call a timeout timer. And what that does is it says, hey, if this guy has been transmitting for more than like three minutes, maybe he's accidentally sitting on his mic. Go ahead and make it so there's nothing coming across that repeater anymore except dead air. As you can see, it just timed out there or it just um, went back to the main VFO. So function eight. And here we are. So in order to prevent that, if you know what the timeout is on your repeater, you could set your timeout on your radio to less. So you're transmitting, you're transmitting, you're transmitting. You don't time out the repeater. Uh, you just stop transmitting, essentially. I'm going to leave it at 90, but if you wanted to have it at 60 or 30, you could do that here and then hit function. Your offset. Now, this is a big one. Offset's right here, and it's 0, 0, 0, and I know you can't see it, but 0. 0.600. 0, 0. And I'm on a positive offset. So if you wanted to change the offset right here, what you might want to do is hit the star button down here and it brings us into this mode where it shows zero. And it's at this point you might say, oh yeah, let's change it to some uh, 0.5, which wouldn't happen typically. Uh, but now I'm going to change it back. So zero, 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 I have to hit the star button down here, zero, 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 six, zero, zero. And then I'm going to hit function. You're going to see though, I still have a plus offset. This plus means the offset is set to plus. I'm going to show you in just a moment how to change that to minus, but for now it's going to stay at plus and we're going to go back into this menu here. Um, so we now have the frequency programmed in. we have the CTCSS tones and we have the, the offset semi programmed in. We're going to go ahead now and I'm going to tell you about Vox level. Now, if you have Vox level and Vox enabled, you can enable Vox by hitting function in three when you're in the main uh, VFO display, but this is the sensitivity that your radio will enable transmit without hitting the push to talk. Um, this is the sensitivity level. So if it hears a voice over a certain level, it allows you then to transmit, but I, I don't usually have Vox enabled as you can see, if I enabled Vox, it would show Vox right here to disable Vox. Same thing. Function three disabled. Let's go back into the menu and I'm going to skip over the Vox level and all the Vox stuff. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to menu 13 channel name. Channel name cannot be programmed because we're in VFO mode. So we're going to go ahead and, and skip over that. And I'll show you how to change that in just a few. The next item is voice on or off. And this would be, if you have this on, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, if you have this on and you hit function and you were to then go into, for example, uh, we're going to go to this mode. Zero, two, one. It'll tell you what channel number you're in. Uh, with that being okay. said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disable it. I'm going to go back into VFO mode and I'm going to go function eight and I'm going to turn that voice off because I don't like that. But that is very useful for some people. Uh, some people need to hear what memory channel they're on. Uh, anyway, here I am. I turned it off by hitting function and we're just going to kind of go through a couple of other small things here real quick. This save on or off is for battery save mode. Now I keep it on. So when this radio doesn't need to be using the full battery, essentially it won't use the full battery uh, or as much uh, amperage as typical. What I'm going to do now is uh, there's a squelch thing. And so if you wanted to set your squelch higher or lower, this is incredibly useful for simplex. If you were really close to somebody and you didn't want to hear a station further away, you might set your squelch to five, six, seven, eight, nine, or whatever. I'm leaving it at four. Um, and, and you could change it in there and then again, hit function. Then we're back to the, the main menu system. So we need to actually save this channel and we need to change this little offset here. So let's go ahead and hit escape. It brings us back into here. We have the CTCSS tone enabled. We have a positive offset. And if you wanted to change from positive to negative offset, which you're going to need to do before you actually save the program repeater or the repeater program, hit function in four. And as you can see, it goes to negative or function four. And there's no offset as you could see. So let me give you up close here, function four plus function four minus. And that's what I want to be for this repeater. And while we're sitting here on the main menu, what if you wanted to have this uh, low power? I'm very close to this repeater and I'm not going to use high power because that's not the amount of power necessary to make my contact. So I'm going to hit function and I'm going to hit nine and I go to H here. I don't know if you could see that. You really can't, but it says H. 
And if I hit function nine again, it goes to L for low power. So perfect, I have my negative offset, my CTCSS tone, low power. And now all we have to really do is just get this programmed in. So if I hit function and I hit star, it says mem channel and it actually shows uh, mem channel one, mem channel two. So uh, the first memory channel I have open is memory channel three, but I'm actually gonna make it memory channel four. It's at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and hit function again. And now memory channel four displays 004. Well, what if I wanna change the name? That's when I'm gonna go back into the function menu eight, and I'm gonna go scroll until I find that channel name that we couldn't change earlier. And at this point, I have a flashing cursor. Now I'm gonna find an N and this takes a while. And after I get that N, I'm gonna go ahead and, whoops, I gotta find the N again. I'm gonna hit the star button and then I'm gonna find the nine. And then I'm gonna hit the star button again. You see how this goes? Um, and then I'm gonna find the H star button E. I think you guys get the point. But I wanna make sure that you do understand it. And yes, it is a little bit of a pain, but look how easy this radio was to program otherwise, right? And then I'm gonna find the P to finish here. Now I'm gonna hit that star button and I'm gonna hit function. Does it do anything? I don't know. So let's go ahead and see here. Yes, it did. So after I hit function, now my channel four is N9 HEP. Some people might actually ask, hey, well, I actually prefer to see the frequency instead of the channel name. How could I change that? Let me show you real quick. To change the display type, turn the radio off and hold down the monitor key, which is this bottom button on the left side of the radio. Turn the radio back on. And you're gonna see here it says DSP, which is display and it says name. Now, if you don't go to reset, if you wanted to change it, you could say display the channel number here, display the frequency or display the name. I'm gonna keep it on name. Actually, I will, I'll change it to channel so you could see. And if I hit function to save this and then escape, it shows now channel four, channel two, channel one. Some people do like that, some people don't. I'm gonna go ahead real quick and I'm gonna change it back. Again, display shows after I hold down monitor and turn the radio on, and then I'm just gonna change it to name, hit function and escape. If you did need to reset the radio, I think you saw pretty much how you would do that. Again, turn the radio off, hold down the button on the side, turn it on, and I'm not gonna do this, I hope. Oops, excuse me. And then you're just gonna use the up down arrow like it's another menu system. We'll call this an advanced menu system. And then you could reset everything, but I'm not gonna do that. Let's go ahead and escape out of here. We now need to make sure that this repeater is actually capable of being transmitted on, or can I make a contact? So I'll be right back while I check. I did test this radio offline with an antenna plugged in, of course, to make sure that I was transmitting and receiving on that repeater. And I was able to make a contact on the repeater. Everything seems to be fine with the radio and the way I programmed this. Now you might have a, a different story. You might say, oh, it didn't work. What am I doing wrong? You gotta give me a little bit more information there, guy. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, I would first check your settings to make sure that you put in the correct CTCSS tones if one is required and make sure that your offset is correct. If it's supposed to be a, a negative offset, make sure you have a negative offset. If you have a positive offset, make sure it's a positive offset. And if there's no offset, make sure you don't have an offset, if you get my point. Another thing I would make sure about is make sure you're close enough to be able to actually make contact to that repeater. I can't program a repeater in 700 miles away and expect to make a contact with this radio, even though I programmed it in. Those are a couple of things I'd probably look at here while just kind of troubleshooting to see if I maybe did something wrong with this radio or why it's not working when I put in the information. Uh, but with that, I think I gave you enough information to get this thing up and running. If I did talk too fast for you, don't forget you could always go back and slow down the video at half speed on YouTube or, or three quarter speed or whatever it might be, whatever speed that you might be able to listen to me at. Anyway, if you like this video, please consider hitting the like button. Please consider subscribing. It only takes a second. It really does help me out in the YouTube algorithm and lets me make more of these videos. Until next time, I'm Ham Radio Dude 73